Hello and welcome to Python tutorial number 100. Yes, you've heard me right. That is 100 tutorials, which thanks to your support are now available to everybody to help get people started in coding in Python. First and foremost, a massive thank you to all of you who have supported me so far and helped me reach this important milestone. So as usual, I invite you to subscribe to the channel and leave your suggestions in the comments down below for videos you would like to see me do in the future. With that, we will get into today's topic as usual. The topic we will see today is the match case scenario. This is extremely useful when discriminating different cases with different actions within a Python code. As usual, it's easier to see the code than it is to explain it. So let's start by writing out define my function of n, and then we will say match n. And then we can say case, for example, 1 will be print, I don't know, you have selected the number 1. Then we can copy this and we can print it a few more times and say case 2, case 3, case 4 and case null. In this case we can say you have selected the number 2 then you have selected the number three, you have selected the number four, and finally we can say invalid selection. And that's it. We can now run the code by pressing the F5 key, and then on the right hand side we can say my font of three. And that will say you have selected the number 3. Then if we say my font 4, it will say you have selected the number 4, etc. Also for number 1 and number 2. Of course, if we say 6, which is not contemplated within our cases, it will say invalid selection. Now let's see what we've just done here. First, we've created a function called my myFunct and given it an argument called n. Then we've given it our first line of code that says match n. What this means is that our function will look at the value of n and see if it corresponds to any of the cases indicated below. We've listed four distinct cases, 1, 2, 3 and 4, and then a generic case to catch all the others. What this means is that if the value of n is 1, 2, 3 or 4, then the corresponding action will occur. In this case, they are simple print statements. If the value of n is none of those four values, then the fifth line will come in play, and we have our generic case, which gives invalid selection. This, of course, can be applied to anything, can be applied to strings, can be applied to even lists, and basically corresponds, in very large terms, to an if, elif, else statement. Except in this case, it's much easier to list many more cases, and in general, is better in terms of a graphic interface. The match case syntax allows us to have three great properties within our code. First of all, it allows our code to be shorter than normal which means we don't have any wasted space or any excess lines which we would have to otherwise read through and interpret. On similar lines to interpretability, we have readability, which means it's very easy to understand that this function matches our value n, and then we have all our cases neatly placed one under the other, each with their corresponding actions. Last but not least is, generally speaking, safety. What this means is that we can easily identify each of the cases involved in our function and then have a simple generic case to catch everything else. 
What this means is that we don't run the risk of having unwanted behavior from our function because we can clearly define a specific action to be performed for each individual case. Now with that, as you've probably understood, the match case syntax is a very handy tool to have within your coding arsenal, which is why I wanted to show it to you today on our 100th episode. As always, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I look forward to seeing you again soon for many more tutorials as well as coding challenges. As always, I invite you to check out my previous episodes, which you can find linked in the top right hand corner of your screen, as well as subscribe to the channel. I look forward to receiving your feedback in the comments down below, and as always, wish all of you from the bottom of my heart, happy coding!